Welcome back to another Beautifully Well Conversations with, you know who it is, it's your girl, Coach Nick, National Boy Certified Health Coach. Super excited because as I sit here basking in a glow of my own hot flash as we speak, <laughs> the conversation is all about menopause and who do we have in the building? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Dr. Day, Dr. Day, a menopause expert is going to share some tips, some pointers, just defining this menopause conversation. And I promise you towards the end, you want to listen to this session in its entirety because there is an awesome opportunity for you to connect even further on this conversation with the Dr. Day yourself. <laughs> All right. So Dr. Day, please tell our beautifuls a little bit about you. Hey, so welcome. Um, I want to thank you so much, Nick, for just having a conversation with me. I, I love our energy together. And so I'm so excited that we are here to help women. And so my journey and kind of where I am is I've been in a naturopathic doctor for 20 years, and I focus on helping women get back their energy, their vitality, their well-being, because as women, we tend to give everything out to everyone else. And when we do that, we deplete ourselves literally at the cellular level. Um, the physical level, the mental level, the spiritual level sometimes. And I love this conversation about menopause because it's really a time where our our body is remodeling, our brain is remodeling, um, and it gives us an opportunity to really kind of sit and think about what was what we've done so far and what we want to do going forward. So it really can be, a really powerful time uh, in a woman's life. So, oh, I love that you said a powerful time. I I want to take you back to one of our first conversations. Okay, and you know I can easily mix up what you what you said. I could have it totally out of context, but I will tell you when you were first explaining menopause uh, in our uh, in person meeting, you brought up puberty, and you likened it to puberty. So can you go back to, cause yeah. you can explain it so much better than I can. If you could take us back to that parallel or that comparison. Yeah. I, so this is, I'm so excited. I'm a little bit of a nerd. So, um, so people that know, like I'm super passionate about things and I'm super nerdy about like learning things. And I really didn't feel like I was treating women in my office individually and I was treating them for menopause and I had been doing it for years and years and years. And I didn't really talk publicly about it because I didn't feel like I could be an expert until I was on the other side so that I not only heard what they were going through, but I had whatever my personal experience was going to be. And so um, as I was going through the process and I had been working with, with women, women for years, for years. I, I was doing a lot, a lot of research. research. And there's a book called The Menopause Brain. And they, and, and it's Dr. Lisa Moscone, who is, um, she's a brain doctor, you know? So she was talking about in puberty and pregnancy and in perimenopause, those three areas each time women's brains are remodeling and changing. So when we think about when you, whether it happened to you yourself or if you have like friends or family, I don't totally remember my puberty experience. I do remember the stories my mom tells about how I was, you know, moody and like rolled my eyes and, you know, like I was whatever, whatever, doing whatever I was doing. Um, I have no idea, neither did she at the time, that my brain was really remodeling, um, preparing me for womanhood. And for those women that have had pregnancy, you know, we have the mommy brain and the, you know, pregnancy brain. You can't remember things like things go kind of wonky. 
And then in the perimenopausal uh, phase, which is the phase right before menopause, so that's where a lot of the symptoms start. Often people report, and it happened to me, actually, um, you get this brain fog or you can't think well, or you can't focus. You might you mean it's not words. because I missed my coffee. Yeah, exactly. It's not, the coffee's <laughs> not going to help you, even though you think that it will. And it's hard, like you, me, so many of the people that we are, are listening are high functioning women and re- like willing to, ready to get it done, remembering all these different things. And then all of a sudden it like halts and you're like, you can't remember that word. You can't remember that um, thing that you were supposed to do. Why did you walk into the room? Like that kind of thing. You start to wonder like what's going on. And I have to share with you for me in my life, one of my special gifts is I'm dyslexic. So uh, for me, I've always had to learn how to compensate for not learning the same way that everybody else learns. Mm -hmm. And so when I was writing my books, my books were an opportunity for me to overcome something that was a fear and a flaw for myself because I thought that I was less than because I lose words under normal circumstances. So the last couple of years going through menopause was a huge challenge for me because I'm a speaker, I'm an author, and I literally lose words when my brain is functioning normally. So I was often terrified because I would be speaking and I would lose words. And for those of you, everybody has different symptoms. There are a lot of symptoms in menopause. It's not just about hot flashes and night sweats and and difficulty sleeping and losing words. But for me, when I lost a word, I would panic. And that panic or that sense of stress or that rush that happens causes hot flashes in most people. And that's not an estrogen thing. That's literally a cortisol stress adrenal thing. Say that again three times. (laughs) I don't know if I can say it again three times, but when you you know can't remember something or you're embarrassed or you are having um, a, a moment of feeling stressed, your body literally releases hormones like cortisol, which is your stress hormone from your adrenal glands. So for me in the last couple of years, what I noticed during my menopausal time is those moments when I was stressed. And it doesn't have to be a bad stress. You could be excited. Like, oh my gosh, I'm about to give a presentation. I'm so excited they invited me to come. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, you know, during the COVID is when I had menopause. So I had the fan in the back so people couldn't see it. And I was like freezing on my feet and I was hot. And, you know, like, so uh, the brain fog for me actually caused me to feel stressed in those moments when I had to perform and it would cause the hot flashes to be worse worse so to be worse so this is kind of people don't always know that or can't kind of set up like when they're coming or why and sometimes they're triggers and I help women to understand what those triggers are that are showing up in in themselves during that menopausal uh time so that they can get some control back Right. You can't totally solve it, but get control back. Love that you brought up the point on perimenopause, because we know quite a few listeners here may be in that phase. And we love the nerd girl that you just brought out with the brain doctor and the research, because it makes perfect sense. Yeah. That this mommy brain, I experienced that twice. And then I was like, wait, when is there a postpartum brain? Because <laughs> I'm still trying to get this right. But the interesting point with also those stressors, the stress connection to menopause. Yeah. How we are uh, aiming to find some type of balance or normalcy yes. with the anxiety and the stress control along with these triggers and menopause. So we appreciate you sharing that. Um, and even what you, what you face as an adult dealing with dyslexia and over, you know, and overcoming that, but, but 
associating that with the new normal with menopause. Like, okay, on one end, I'm dealing with this. And then all of a sudden I'm realizing I'm losing words more frequently. Yes. I'm in a bit more of a panic more often. What is going on? So you started to mention and take us into yeah. this next thing because all of our symptoms very I've been hot flash and I have to say I'm a hysta sister I had a hysterectomy young in age and kept the ovaries the two little disco balls Good. are still hanging out yay um, but life is crazy <laughs> so from a holistic perspective yeah just give us a tiny bit what are what are some things that could help us as you said find some control in this new normal. Yeah. So one of the things that I want to say, as I was listening to what you were saying is I just want to say this, that again, from a research perspective, that about 85% of women who go through the perimenopausal phase. So let's talk about that just for one minute. And then I'll talk about some solutions. So what happens if we think about menopause, often women, when they come into the office, will say like, I'll ask them, are you in menopause? And they're like, I don't know. I, I have no idea. So let's think about this as like a continuum, right? So we have this time before uh, when we are not menstruating at all. So before puberty, and then during puberty, we have this flow of estrogen and progesterone and FSH and LSH, all these hormones that are specifically female hormones that help to protect us and, and regulate our periods, but also our moods and our like energy levels and all these things. So we have that happening. Then we have other hormones that play a role in this process uh, of our everyday lives. And that's where we were talking about cortisol, but thyroid can play a role. Um, we have digestive enzymes, we have insulin, we have all these different things. We have neurotransmitters. So all these things for women are playing a role as well. It's like a concert, right? You have to have all the different sections like operating for it to, for it to play well for us. And then once women, it could be as early as 35, but in general, when women get into their mid forties, then if you're in your mid forties, you're probably in perimenopause. And you may not experience any symptoms or you may experience some, some symptoms and the most common ones we've already talked about, but you can have symptoms like aches and pains in your body. You can have frozen shoulder. You can have problems with your eyes. You can have, um, you know, there's so many, you can have digestive issues. You know, there are lots of different things that show up. There's a list of like 35 different issues that could show up that are part of this perimenopausal time. So in our mid forties, we start, people often say, oh, well, it's, I'm just getting older. That's just what it is. And it's not that, that really, if we start thinking about this perimenopausal time where our hormones are starting to shift, primarily our female hormones are starting to shift, but others can shift as well. Then we might have fatigue and um, brain fog and you know all these kind of different symptoms that can show up inflammation on our in our bodies so that happens over the course of years and unfortunately for black women it is a longer time frame than it is for white women and i say that because for us it may be 3 or 4 years longer through when we're having uh hormonal changes our periods may or may not change. Then we hit menopause, which just is the time when our body is no longer having our cycles for one year. And you don't know it until it's already happened, right? So you have to wait 12 months. So we don't really know when menopause is. So one thing I want to change for people to understand is that it is a process. It is not one moment in time. And then once we don't have a period for 12 months, we are now in menopause or some people call it postmenopause. That's what I was taught in school 20 years ago. But women can live up to 30, 40, you know, 50 years in this after menopause time. And sometimes women still have symptoms after you're no longer having your period. 
And then if you have a surgical menopause, like you were explaining, which is you, you have some type of surgery or radiation or chemical thing that stops your period. So it's not naturally the way your body had intended it. Then you can actually get thrown into those symptoms more quickly because your body doesn't have time to balance out. Mm, at right on point. So that's kind of the process. So I want people to kind of, because people don't understand, am I in menopause? What's happening? If you have changes, you're probably in perimenopause. And menopause generally happens between 51 and 55 in natural settings, but each woman can be a little bit different in the way that their symptoms are showing up. So you brought out this process and tied it to how there are differences when women of color, Black women. Yeah. That per the perimenopausal phase could last longer in us. Yes. But can you also confirm or or just talk a little bit about um I, I just have to bring up the heart health conversation. Okay. The, and that is primarily because we know a large majority of our listeners, yeah, ladies, we talk a whole lot about stress and, and losing weight and waist snatch and all that good stuff. However, in that perimenopausal phase, it has been said that because of such a shift in hormones, that women and specifically Black women can find themselves at a higher risk for uh, heart-related illnesses. Yeah. So this is my personal opinion. I don't have research on this, but I think the reason why women of color and Black women in particular have longer periods of dealing with symptoms is because of the microaggressions that we have to deal with all the time and the extra stressors that we have to deal with all the time. So I don't have research on that. I would love for them to do research. Women don't get enough research done on us to understand what's going on with us. And then women of color are a smaller like, group within that. So there's not as much research done on us, but my clinical experience has been that, that that's part of when I'm treating kind of managing stress, like you said, then it helps with the symptoms as well. And so when we talk about heart health, we have to then think about a couple things that happen in, in perimenopause and menopause. One is that those stressors impact ourselves and impact our heart, right? Um, the weight gain that we have is usually in the vis like visceral in our organs, right? So if we're talking about our female hormone, I mean, our female uh, heart, then if that starts having more fat in it and in our abdomen, if it's having more fat, then that puts us at higher risk for heart problems or digestive problems. So there's that piece that we have to think about as well. And then the kind of next piece is insulin. Usually, oftentimes, because insulin has to do with diabetes, and when our body becomes insulin resistant, Hello. we are at higher rates of diabetes as a result of that. And that when women go through that perimenopausal time and going into menopause, estrogen has a protective effect, not only on our heart, which is shown across all women, like all women, once we go into menopause, then by the time we are in our 60s, our risk for heart disease is equal to that of men. Prior to uh, menopause, we have protection from the estrogen that we are producing in our bodies because it's an anti-inflammatory hormone and it protects us from heart disease. And then with diabetes, the same thing we notice insulin resistance begins to increase as we get in that perimenopausal menopausal time. So diabetes also puts us at higher risk for heart disease. So when we talk about women's health and when we talk about menopause, we have to talk about taking care of our bodies. We have to talk about our um, heart conditions, our blood pressure, our cholesterol, our you know, um, heart palpitations and our valves and our, like we talk about all that. And we have to talk about our prediabetes and diabetes because those things make the symptoms worse and make them last longer. So as we take care of our whole selves, right? It's not just the menopausal self, but as we take care of our whole selves, 
then our our symptoms begin to feel better and we begin to feel feel better. And the thing for me about menopause, if we think about holistic and treatments, one of the biggest things that I work with women in their 40s plus is putting yourself and your health first Numero. so that you can show up for your family and your husband and your community and your job. Because if you put everybody else first, your symptoms are worse, you're cranky, you're upset, you're having more anxiety, you're having heart palpitations, you're having all of these symptoms because you're not taking care of yourself. Oh, mic dropping. <laughs> I think I'm gonna use that as part of the B-roll to this. Okay. Because in this explanation, we went all the way around and circled it right back to the biggest point, and that is a woman's intention on looking at her whole health, her whole self, yes. and the linkage to chronic conditions that only increase, risk factors increase, when we are in that perimenopausal, menopausal phase. Love that you brought out, estrogen is protecting us until we are in full swing ahead <laughs> when those estrogen levels decline, menopause is rearing its head. So what we do, we treat our health like a bank account. Yes. So we think about what's in the savings. Yeah. Right? What's there in case of this rainy day, right? So as women, we are, if we're in that perimenopausal phase or we even know that we're building up to it, how intentional should our efforts become knowing that risk factors increase? Thank you for bringing up diabetes. We're sleeping on that. Yeah. Insulin resistance can happen just before a pre-diabetes diagnosis. That's right. Because insulin resistance typically will typically take place before <laughs> the A1C levels begin to um, go beyond the normal range. And we're sleeping on that. Yeah. So that, yeah. But it's not always, it's not everyone. It's We have to pay attention, right? One of the things that I do is I do additional tests that the conventional doctors don't do. And one of the things that I do is I do a fasting insulin because insurance doesn't cover it. They're, they're not going to give it to you. But when people come in and we look at that, we see what you just said, Coach Nick. We see that the, the, um, the fasting insulin is higher than normal. Now the A1Cs are higher than normal. Now the glucose is higher than normal. And I know you probably talk about this all the time, but that's one of the things that some additional things that we want to look at, not just what insurance is covering because it covers pills. But if we want to take a holistic approach, sometimes we have to get the additional information so that we can feel empowered. And so what I will say, the question that you asked me earlier about, well, what do, what do we do about this? I mean, we're talking about it, right? We have to have a, a good, a real conversation about what's going on with our health and all the different things that are going on with our health. We have to think about like, what is it that we want as human beings who happen to be women? So what are the things we want? Have we put our dreams on the side to take care of everybody else's dreams? And then what happens when we get into that perimenopausal uh, phase and our estrogen begins to drop a little bit, we don't have the tolerance that we used to have to take care of everyone else. We now are starting to think about, well, what is it that we want? So women can be like frustrated and, and upset and angry and not understanding why and yelling at people and short fuses. And some of that is because we haven't been paying attention to our needs, our wants, our goals, the things that are important to us. And we're in this place in midlife where we've looked at how much we've taken care of others. And now consciously or subconsciously, we're like, well, are we taking care of ourselves? So we need to, you know, think about that. The foods that we eat make a difference. The exercise, different types of exercises can be beneficial. There's a whole conversation, which we don't have time to get into now, but we will talk about it later around um, what are supplements? What are medications like hormone replacement therapy? Is it good? Is it bad? What are people scared of? Does it increase risk for other things? Like those are conversations that we need to have 
and all of the information is not out there. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to think about that. And in, if you do have issues around like heart health and you go to your heart doctor, one of my best friends, she said she was talking to her cardiologist and her cardiologist couldn't give her information about whether she should do different types of uh, hormone replacement therapies or not, because they're a cardiologist. So like, I'm not your gynecologist, but she was asking about it in terms of heart health. So this is where um, I heard a podcast the other day. They said, uh, one of the experts said that they are menopause literate. I was like, oh my God, I love that. I want I am going to call myself menopause literate. Come to someone who's menopause literate to Thanks. get answers, right? to the questions that you have that you deserve to have answers for. Which is why you are not only an advocate, but an expert. <laughs> and we are, I, I tell you, I, I, I want to summarize this wonderful conversation that's going to keep going. And we're going to share with you in just a moment. You've listened to this message so far. What have you gleaned from it. Hopefully now you understand the difference between perimenopause and menopause, that this is truly a process. Ladies, our brains are associated with these three Ps, puberty, pregnancy, and perimenopause. The brain is going through a process. <laughs> How many stages do we have to contend with? And then the beauty of the holistic approach that Dr. Day mentioned, we know that it's going to go back to those lifestyle changes that can only be implemented when we intentionally decide that to put our health first is not selfish. It is no longer an option. And those people we love and that we're nurturing, we're able to even do more. That's right. Because we're taking care of us first. So- to keep this conversation going, Dr. Day, I want to put it back to you yeah. as we wind down and wrap up and get our audience excited about what they can expect this coming May. So tell us a little bit more about this hybrid event and why every woman needs to be in attendance. <laughs> I'm so excited. So first of all, I'm so excited I get to be with you and your Hello. energy. Um, I'm so excited. On May the 5th, which is a Sunday at 4 p.m., we are going to be live. We're going to be live, right? And we're going to be live at your spa. And we're also going to be hybrid at the same thing. So me and Nicole, you can go there and at 4 o'clock and we will have a talk and we will talk more about menopause. If you're not able to make it, then we have a hybrid event because my practice is in D.C. And so people may not be able to make it um, all the way up there. And you can come either way and you can learn more and be part of a women's community around learning about menopause, supporting each other, sharing your experiences in a safe and a loving space. Because anything Coach Nick does is a safe, loving space. So that's what we're doing non-judgmental, full of resources, rich with knowledge. And Dr. Day, we're excited to have you. So trust me, the enthusiasm is an interchange. It's an equalizing. This conversation about women's health, you heard it first. You're going to see more updates. We hope you're following uh, us socially as well. And I promise as soon as we have the additional updates to Dr. Day's event, I'm going to update the podcast information so you can easily click away at a link to learn more about how you can be a part of this fantastic event um, taking place May 5th. So stay tuned. But Dr. Day, how can they find you? What's the best way to connect with you both socially and your uh, website as well? So my name is Dr. Day, D-A-E is my name. And so my uh, all my social handles are Healthy Days and it's D-A-E. So it's Healthy D-A-E-S. So whether you're on IG or you're on Facebook, um, LinkedIn, you certainly can find me by my full name, which is Dr. Damon Jones. Um, so you can find me there and we, there are lots of ways to reach out and connect. Please feel free to do that. DM me, send me an email. 
um, go to my website, which is healthydays.com. So you have all different ways of getting more information. But the best way is to come to our event on May the 5th. <laughs> That's the best way. <laughs> you get to meet Dr. Day in person. Wow, this was a juicy conversation. This was Good. enlightening. We learned a lot and we are so excited. We cannot wait um, to May 5th. And you don't have to wait till May 5th to connect with Dr. Day. You can reach out. Um, definitely follow her socials. And um, Dr. Day, again, we thank you for taking time to hang out with our beautifuls. And for the listeners, hey, at the end of the day, no pun intended. How about that? <laughs> Take time for yourself. Remember, ladies, you are already beautiful. Let's get beautifully well. Until next time. See you later. <laughs>